we talk about the sixth principle. The sixth principle says we promise to affirm and promote the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. The sixth principle seems extravagant in its hopefulness and improbable in its prospects. Can we continue to say we want world community, peace, liberty, and justice for all? The world is full of genocide, abuse, terror, and war. What have we gotten ourselves into? As naive or impossible as the sixth principle may seem, I'm not willing to give up on it. In the face of our culture's apathy and fear, I want to imagine and help create a powerful vision of peace by peaceful means, liberty by liberatory means, justice by just means. I want us to believe and to live as if we believe that a world community with peace, liberty, justice for all is possible. There is no guarantee we will succeed, but I can assure you we will improve ourselves and improve the world by trying. And this was written by Reverend Sean Parker Dennison, the Tree of Life Congregation in McHenry, Illinois. We are here because we are alive, because we would rather be alive than dead. We are here because we have received life as a gift, because despite all the contradictions we believe the gift is good. We have come to this day to celebrate life and to say thank you for the gift of the rain and the sun. We have come to share our lives with one another that our sorrows may be lightened, our joys doubly gl gladdened, and the fullness of life known and proclaimed in all its pain and glory. We are thankful for the gift of being together. We are thankful for being. We are thankful for life. to feel the 
In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And that is by John McRae. So for our program today, Reverend Dottie Stone will lead us in a service of remembrance of those we have lost. And we invite you to share memories of our me former members and anyone that you wish to remember at this time. Dottie. The year was 1952. I was a junior at Sullivan High School and I had been chosen to deliver the annual Memorial Day dedication on the courthouse lawn. I still remember almost all the words of In Flanders Field after all these years. A dedication to those lives lost in World War I, even as World War II had ended and we were now in the midst of the Korean War. Little did we know of all the wars that were yet to follow, including the current battles in Afghanistan and the Ukraine. Memorial Day remembrances continued through the years, and we still acknowledge the last weekend in May as a time of remembering all those that we have loved and lost through the years. We've been in the midst of a different kind of battle the last two years with the greatest worldwide pandemic we've known in our lifetime. The losses have been so great that we have not been able to acknowledge many of them because we've been afraid to gather lest we continue to spread the contagious germs. Now that we feel a little more comfortable in gathering, we've chosen today to remember some of our friends who've been connected to our congregation in the past few years. And we've asked you to help tell their stories as part of our service today. Several persons have volunteered to share personal memories, and we will also open the space for others who wish to talk. I begin with a poem, Remembrance and Remembering. Remembrance and Remembering, two words, same root, different meaning. Remembering is a simple act of recalling the past, its shape and liniments and movements. Remembrance, however, is quite a different matter. Remembrance is recalling the past in the way which inspires us to mold a future. Remembering is easy. Humans are remembering creatures. We remember as regularly as we eat and sleep. It is as natural as getting up in the morning and going to bed at night. It's an act of the mind. Remembrance is hard. It requires that the memories of the past guide our presence and inspire our future. Remembering is passion, passive. Images come unto us. Remembrance is active. It catches up the memory and mixes it in the alchemy of our lives. And we emerge from the process as new people. 
Let us remember, of course. We need to remember, but let us also hold in remembrance those persons, those events, those experiences that have the power to transform our lives. Then embedded in us, past, present, and future, all bound up in the transitory characters and creatures that we are. With these thoughts, we would begin our sharing. And I've asked uh, Frank Young to go first to talk about Jim Conyers. Jim Conyers was a fixture of that chair back there next to the door. He would come late every Sunday when he came, when he felt up to it. And I enjoyed being with him and talking with him because he told stories. And he was close to another member of the congregation, John Laska. And the two of them could talk story, as the Hawaiians say, for ages and sometimes did. Later, as he was getting frail, he was concerned with starting a speech here, a program here, to honor John Laska. And I arranged for that to be done, got the paperwork done, he signed it, and sent the check to the school, to the congregation. Um, we tend to forget how recent segregation has been. Jim and I together attended, not in the same school, but we attended segregated schools as youngsters. Um, both of us had experiences that were unpleasant and that brought us together. Later on, as I brought things to him to read to him because he was no longer able to read things, I read him things and we talked about important parts of our lives. And he would always say, when I read a particular article, they've got it right. And when I talked about a particular person in my background, he would say, oh, I know him. I worked with him. Jim was an amazing person and good to be around, laughed a lot, and as a fellow academic, he had an interesting set of experiences and we enjoyed talking about them. I miss him. At the end of his life, we were living in Westminster Village together and I would go over and meet with him periodically in his apartment because getting around was difficult for him. And those experiences were good for me. I'm sure he enjoyed them, but I think I got more out of them than he did. Thank you, Jim. Would anyone else like to say anything about Jim? I remember Jim quite well also. Um, the one thing that sticks in my mind was many, many years ago, we had a program on animals, in particular pets, of course, and uh, the idea was that we were going to raise some money for keeping pets. And many people spoke in favor of this activity, and Jim got up and said, shouldn't we spend our money on people first. And that just touched my heart. I knew Jim um, as long as I've known the Alaska family. And uh, he and John would go fishing all the time. They're fishing buddies. And um, John just really appreciated him. Um, and I know Jim appreciated John. So I, I'm really looking forward to, in September, us having uh, an honoring of both Jim and John with a, a wonderful musical evening, which you'll hear more about, but circle 
Saturday night, September 18th, I believe. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. Jim not only sat in here, but he also sat out in the, in the hall, um, just on the other side of the door, and he would always greet me with some wise words from him, and I appreciated him very much, and all the contributions that he made behind the scenes in this congregation. And while Kathy is up here, I'm gonna ask Kathy and Brenda if they will both speak about Ann Seltzer. And we spent a lot of Sundays together, as well as other times. So I, I wasn't quite sure what direction to go with her. So I wrote her a note that I'd like to read to you. Dear Ann, I miss you. You are a very caring person who did a lot for our community, both in town as well as being smart, thoughtful, and very, very active in the UU community. You're also a very kind and loving friend who inspired me. I love you, Brenda. Well, I will reiterate what you just said. I did write a few words. Anne, smart, hilariously funny, creative, a great writer of emails, a political creature, a generous friend and gift giver, sensitive, easily hurt, and uh, spiritual, nervous, lover of the arts, and cats. A beautiful friend. I knew Anne for many years. She was our office manager here for five, six years, and uh, I think she was pretty organized about it. Uh, when my daughter was ill, she visited with the Tao of Pooh. Thought that would be a good book for her to read. Uh, she was sensitive and spiritual. We kept in touch when she and Gary moved away, both of us writing often, emails usually, and sending little gifts and funny cards. As I knew she was missing Terre Haute and I wanted her to know she was important to us. Uh, she also would send information about the Cleveland Art Museum and the symphony, like I was gonna drive over there and see it, but it was still wonderful. And uh, I always enjoyed that. Uh, she always wanted to know about the cats because she really wanted one of her own. So she couldn't really carry a tune, but she was in the choir and enjoyed it immensely. She took painting classes. She was often improving herself creatively. I was always telling her that she should write a book. She was so funny, creative, and clever. Many of you remember that about her, right? How many of you remember that about Anne? How many of you remember Anne? Okay. But when Gary died, she was unable to get over the pain of losing him. Everyone heals in their own way and in their own time. But Anne was obsessed with Gary's death and couldn't get over it. And seemed to become more grief-stricken as time passed, which often happens. And she even began to, t to make Gary into this person I, didn't, I wasn't expecting of her, kind of lionizing him. Uh, I've known great loss, but Anne was unconsolable in a whole new level. She was very lonely, had few outlets, and COVID surely did not help. She became more and more isolated, and, and so I kept sending silly cards and trying to keep in touch. But it was still a surprise when her sister wrote that she had died. I just didn't expect it. I missed her still and often forget that she isn't on this planet anymore. Her family did not have a memorial for her, but I consider this one today. And deserved to be honored. I have a photo from a short visit that Lauren and I had with her last summer and um, on our way home from a family wedding in New Jersey. She was so happy that we visited and rolled out the red carpet for us. You can see in the photo her pixie smile and fun-loving spirit. I asked her sister to send a few poems of hers so that we could celebrate her creative spirit today. Here are a few. Ode to Coffee Ground. Oh, give me a quiet place with art on the brick walls and well-worn tables and mismatched chairs where I might examine my soul and savor the smell of coffee brewing 
and listened for the soft sounds of the espresso machine hissing. Um, and then there's another. This is called The End. Like a journey into a vast world of places and things and people, I could go to the old card catalog and find amazing things. By order of the corporate world, cart card catalogs replaced by computer programs so that the vast world of my mind's mapping has expired like an overdue book. I too knew Anne for many, many years and um, <laughs> we had a strange association. But one, one thing that she did, even when, after she left, was she came to the Debs Foundation dinners. And I was always so glad to see her at those dinners. Uh, and what we would do is we would exchange pairs of socks. <laughs> and I have many pairs of socks from Anne, and I'm sure that in her collection she had them from me. They were wild and crazy, and we just loved the, the exchange. No, 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 they were brand new socks. No, they were always new socks. No, no, no. Thanks for asking. <laughs> this is sort of an illustration of how we're all connected. Um, before I started coming to the UU Church, I worked at um, Farrington Grove for a while, and that's where I met Anne. Uh, she was doing some substitute teaching there, and I got to meet her there, and that's where I met Artana. Uh, so it was... Then when I started coming here and started recognizing faces, it just seemed all, I know, fateful or something, but it was, it was nice. And one thing I do remember about Anne, oh yeah, she was pretty funny, but she was also especially kind and inclusive of my granddaughter, making sure to you know, speak to her every Sunday when she came and things like that. Um, so oh yeah, I miss her and I was shocked and surprised. Next, I would like to ask Andrea if she would talk about Artana, whom some of you knew for the creative things she did here in the congregation. Hi, um, I am Andy Mason, and I'm, I want to talk about Artana Rose Moreland. Uh, as many of you saw her daughter earlier, um, when she left the world in 2020, it left a huge rift in my life and, uh, and one in her daughter's life. Um, and in remembering her yesterday, uh, she, she did take her own life. She, it was her choice. Um, and because of that, I wanted to participate in the memorial run and walk for her. Uh, we carried roses in her honor as we participated. And um, it's definitely something that she would have enjoyed. She enjoyed music. She enjoyed silly things. She enjoyed anything that involved art and crafts. And she loved to dance. And there's, you can't find something more silly than a color fun run. Um, lots, of, lots of color. The wetness made it stick. Um, we had smears of color up and down our arms and legs. And, <laughs> and it would have been something that she would have loved. And when we wrapped up the, the run and walk, they had a bubble pit with, with, D, with a DJ. And if Rose was here with us, she would have been right there in the deep of those bubbles, right with her daughter. And um, if there was a time yesterday that would have been the most poignant and most Rose, it would have been losing ourselves in that bubble pit. Um, I knew Rose uh, since she was a young child, she uh, is a daughter of other members of the congregation, the Barnhearts, and uh, she and her sister got to know my daughter, Say Heine, and um, they, became, they grew up together as very close friends, and the family uh, welcomed my daughter as I welcomed their daughters. 
and I was kind of like a second mother. And today I take care of Rose's daughter, uh, Rain, Serafina Moreland. Um, and I try to keep Rose's memory alive. She's, she had videos on TikTok, and we occasionally will show Rain some of those videos. Uh, there are some very personal commentaries made on TikTok. Uh, and we try to show her, her daughter the lighter ones. Um, it'll be when she's older that she'll, she can look at those others. Uh, but rather than focus on how she passed, I want to remember how she did try to live. She loved black and red and purple, and those colors could all be found on her lips. She wore bright colors, bold patterns. Sometimes they didn't even match and she'd wear it anyways. She loved, again, like I said, she loved to sing and uh, she loved karaoke games and uh, we'd all sing together as a family and that was a lot of fun. Um, anybody who struggles with suicidal ideation, my heart goes out to them. And anyone who has lost someone due to that, my heart goes out to them. And it's not, it's not an easy thing to, to experience as a survivor of someone who has decided to go. But go boldly, wear the red lipstick, wear the rose earrings, dress in bright patterns if you want to, and don't give a damn about what others have to say about it. Thank you. There is a hope by uh, Rose's mother. We switch back and forth between Rose and Artana. Anyway, that as the weather gets better, uh, Ellen will be meeting with um, her mother in, in hopes that a rose bush can be planted as a memorial around here. Marty Cornelius was another person that was an important member of our congregation. I almost chose to wear the robe today that she made for me, and I still miss not just chatting with her, but being able to take different items of clothing to her and say, Marty, what should I do with this? And so I would like to ask Julie to speak about Marty. This is a picture of Marty Cornelius. She was a gifted teacher. She taught history at South for more than 20 years, but she was a kind and a kind person and a good friend at her memorial service here. Someone mentioned that she was reckless. Well, I can attend, attest to that because Frank was going off to Atlanta and I didn't want to go. And she said, for heaven's sakes, Julie, go and, and enjoy yourself. And I did. I went to the Martin Luther King Memorial and it was very moving. So thank you, Marty. What I will always remember about Marty is when I first came back to Indiana, and was staying with my father, I would sometimes come up here to Terre Haute to attend events in the community, music, speakers, so forth. And Marty would always seek me out at whatever event it was and speak to me personally and make me feel welcome that I was in Terre Haute. There's one more person that we would like to remember today. So 
uh, Rosenthal was a, I knew him both through here and as a professor, a colleague at ISU. He was in the English department. He passed away last November uh, at age 93. Um, he uh, was really, the way, the, um, I went online just to remind myself of uh, some of the background of him. Um, he, um, he was from um, the D.C. area. He uh, uh, had gone, uh, gotten his uh, final degree at Northern Illinois University, so he moved out into the Midwest. Um, and I, I realized I was hoping to find when he had joined the faculty, but I couldn't. But what I wanted to, what, what really struck me was his passion for social action and Ah, lovely, excellent. And his um, caring about what he felt was the right within um, politics, uh, within human caring, and that he, uh, and what, although I did find, re from his obituary, which I didn't remember, that he had published several books, he had written plays that had gotten national awards, which I didn't know. Um, I think his letters to the editor were probably what have stuck in my mind. And let's see some hands if people remember his letters to the editor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, there were, you know, what, uh, generally about once a month, and they were always, um, they were very lengthy and very powerful. Um, and not everybody liked them. <laughs> but I felt I was appreciative of the paper publishing them and his, his writing them and the, and the um, paper publishing them. And so I felt like um, I, I just want to make sure we all hold that in our minds, in our memories of his presence in this community. Among my father's papers, I found a letter from Saul to my father who had written in response to, to one of the articles that my father wrote for the newspaper. And he treasured that letter from Saul like to thank everyone that participated today. I realize that we have gone a little bit long, but I think it was worth it. And I'd like to close with another poem by Richard Gilbert entitled, Remember You Are Alive. We are united here in the holy ritual of life if we are quiet enough, all we can hear is breathing, the rhythmic inhale and exhale of many worshipers. There's a beauty in breathing. It reminds us that we are alive. Living seems such a commonplace. We're so busy doing it, we hardly notice that we live and move and have our being. Suspended as we are in the daily round of getting and spending, torn apart as we are by myriad demands, faced as we are with too many challenges, overwhelmed as we are with too much to do and too little time to do it. The simple act of breathing slowly and deliberately reminds us that we are alive, alive in a community of souls who share this space and this time, alive in a world awash with wonder, spangled with splendor, abounding in beauty. We are reminded that spirit means breath, that the holy down through the ages had, had to do with so intangible a thing as air, that neither eyes can see nor ears can hear. 
as we breathe in this life-giving invisibility, we remember that what is important cannot be measured. Breathe, 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 and remember you are alive. In the spirit of this weekend and all that's happening, we're going to be closing with a song. Ain't gonna study war no more. the closing words. We seek a world free of war and the threat of war. We seek a society with equity and justice for all. We seek a community where every person's potential may be fulfilled. We seek an earth restored. And these are the words from the Friends Committee on National Legislation that sum up their mission statement. May the blessings of love rest upon you. May peace abide with you. May God's Go in peace, know that you are loved, and that your life is sacred. <laughs>